Today I'm going to uh, attempt installing a preamp system in my uh, Taylor guitar and I wanted to provide an instructional video for reference. Um, there's many out there I'm sure but I wanted to put together something that's a little more detailed than uh, what I have been seeing out there. Um, this is the uh, uh, Fishman ellipse matrix blend system that I'm going to be installing on my um, on my Taylor guitar. So um, it's not going to be one of those videos where I'm throwing music out there and fast forwarding everything. So those areas that are pretty critical I'm going to take the time and kind of go over it in detail. Um, for those of you uh, that are do-it-yourselfers and would like to attempt a project similar to this. So anyway I hope that this will be helpful and uh, we'll get started. All right. So this is the guitar that the uh, Fishman is going into. It's a uh, Taylor Grand Auditorium 3. Not a high-end guitar, but uh, it's not a cheap, inexpensive guitar either. Before we get started, I just wanted to uh, uh, just announce a little disclaimer here. I'm not encouraging anybody um, that this is a simple project that uh, anyone can do it, okay? I mean, uh, Fishman, they recommend a professional installation. They've got it right here. It says right here on the box, professional installation recommended. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you plan your work out, and I can't emphasize being patient about what you do. Have a game plan, be patient, always make safety utmost concern, protect your instrument as you go through. There's no reason why anyone can't do this, but only you can make that decision if you feel that you have uh, the abilities, you have the confidence in doing it. And hopefully this video will help uh, provide you with a little uh, more comfort that this is attainable. Um, again, I'm, I'm no luthier by any chance. This is actually my first installation of this type, but um, I'm very comfortable in working with my hands. I mean, this is a first, but um, there's a first for everything, right? I mean, I remember the first time I pulled a car engine out. I remember the first time, I, you know, as a homeowner, all the projects we have going. So um, you have to make that choice if you feel confident enough in order to uh, to do this, and of course your instrument and why you're doing it to your instrument. This particular instrument I'm using in performing um, is something like this. I wouldn't think that someone would take their high end or their most expensive instrument out gigging with it and want to install this. Obviously it's going to uh, make some alterations to your sound because it's a, it's a fix to your soundboard. So it's a compromise there. But this instrument, um, I do have a need for it, uh, rather than dealing with a microphone and feedback issues and all that going with it. So this, uh, I think, is a great uh, compromise, and for me personally, this is well worth it. So let's get started. Okay, well, the first thing we're obviously going to have to do is remove the strings, um, and we're going to want to take a look at the what's under the bridge here. But um, this is a handy tool to, ha to get. I, uh, this is actually by Planet Waves. I think I picked this up at uh, Guitar Center a few years back. It's, uh, it's really been a godsend. It even has kind of a built-in wire cutter right here on the end. And so you don't have to worry about another tool. But it's a winder and it works great. It's only a you know, couple of dollars, I think. Uh, again, I got this up at Guitar Center. So we're gonna remove the strings off of this puppy right now and move forward. Also, it's a good idea to secure your work. I mean, protect your instrument. I put uh, just a, a furniture moving pad down on this uh, work table. And uh, actually, I've got the bow of the guitar kind of clamped in place just so it won't slide off. It's not clamped hard. I mean, I can still move it, but it just keeps it from sliding accidentally off the uh, work area. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and remove the strings. I just put these on not too long ago, so I'm going to try and keep them in fairly decent shape. I'd like to restring it using the same strings if I can.
I do a lot of alternate tuning and I tried these uh, John Pierce uh, slack key uh, gauges and uh, they've been wonderful on this particular guitar. I haven't gone through doing a new setup on it afterwards but uh, really there hasn't been any noticeable uh, difference in playability so it's been really pleased with it. Again, what makes this a great tool is it's got uh, a little area right here. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe it's just the area it's in focus. It's notched out. Just simply put it underneath your end pins here, and it just uh, pries them up beautifully. Very easy to do, uh, especially those that get stuck. I always keep these in order. By the way, uh, this base side, and then I just keep them in order to keep the same pins. I don't. This might be a pet peeve of mine, but uh, anyway, that's what I do. The next thing that we want to do, we've got the strings removed. Now we're just going to uh, assess what we have because the piezo pickup, <clears throat> excuse me, sits underneath the bridge. Uh, they have two configurations: one's a narrow, and the other one's a, uh, a wide. And I believe the tailor takes the narrow, but we want to make sure that the piezo fits down into that bridge slot properly. So the next thing we want to do is remove the bridge. <clears throat> and uh, the other thing is, is that the thickness of the piezo, we have to reduce the bridge by the thickness of the piezo, uh, the pickup itself. Because if we don't, it's going to raise this up too high and it's going to change our whole setup configuration. So uh, some of these can be pretty snug. Um, I have a set of uh, cutters that I use. They're kind of like this, but we want to take care in not um, marring the surface of this. So I'm just going to take a paper towel here and put over it. And I'm not squeezing it very hard, but I'm just going to get a good grip and pull that up. There, it came right out. It's a compensated bridge. Um, bone, actually, is what it appears to be. And now we're going to take a look down in the slot. Um, I've noticed that they've actually, one of the requirements on drilling is that we're going to have to drill a hole down in here um, to a, you know, for the wiring to, to go down through for the piece of pickup. But they've all, already got a um, kind of a pilot pre-drilled, not all the way through, but it does stop to provide a guide for the proper placement of that, which is really nice. I think that's very nice give you a closer shot of that. There you can see it. There's the uh, kind of a pilot that's somewhat pre-drilled into the slot there at the very end. See it right there? Doesn't go all the way through but uh, that's really nice that they've uh, provided that. So this is the uh, the piezo pickup under the bridge that, that goes under the the bridge and uh, we're just checking right now the thickness this the width actually and this is the thin and this is on a tailor and it fits beautifully it goes right into that slot um, very little play end to end and this is the wire that will pass down through that hole so that fits in beautifully now the thickness of this we're going to have to reduce the saddle by and so um, again, we just take our time and use patience to do that, and I'll show you the technique here in a minute. Um, I've seen where guys use uh, electric tools, clamp, uh, clamp the, uh, the bridge into a vise, and use a Dremel tool. I'd, I'd rather do everything by hand and do it systematically and a little at a time. Uh, whenever you do any project like this, patience is everything. Don't ever get ahead of yourself and think each, uh, each stage all the way through before you go with it. The other thing we want to do is to take this unit here and we want to sit it up underneath the sound hole. Uh, let me get this up a little bit. We want to check it against the sound hole to make sure that we have clearance with the bracing and things of that nature because I can actually feel a brace right here. I don't know if I'm going to even have clearance on this particular model guitar, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay, I've got the, uh, I took it out of the box. 
this is what we have. This is the end pin jack that will fish down through the body out to the end. This is uh, for the battery. The battery pack will fit against the block up here by the neck. Um, so I'm just going to feed those down in there because basically I want to just check and make sure that it's going to fit in the sound hole and be able to mount. This is actually the mounting plate right here and it's held in place by some uh, rare earth magnets, very strong. And this is an adhesive piece that's peeled off after we prepare the surface here to accommodate it, uh, which we'll get into later. Right now, I felt some bracing up underneath here, which I'll take a mirror and show. But um, actually, this is ingenious because of the, the clearance. This fits right up against the edge uh, perfectly. And then this, of course, clears the bracing. So we're going to fish this in. This is a microphone. So it's a dual system. Uh, the matrix. It's got a piezo pickup here on the bridge and then it's using an internal microphone as well. So um, basically we're going to fish it up underneath there and we're going to just check um, this uh, let me get ahead of my, I'm getting ahead of myself. This face switch right here they say it's supposed to be at nine o'clock if you're looking at the guitar as a clock this will be nine o'clock right here and so that's the ideal location and so and it goes right up in there beautifully which will provide the controls but uh, it goes right along the edge here hardly you know you won't be able to see it notice it at all hardly so it fits up on there there beautifully so that's first step we've confirmed that the piezo pickup uh, fits we've confirmed that this will fit so we can proceed ready to prepare the surface for that. That'll be next. But probably we should uh, address the end pen. Okay, um, we've confirmed the fit. We've uh, checked the piezo under the saddle that's going to fit. So um, I would like to go ahead and pre-drill the holes before and that way I can vacuum up everything, get everything cleaned out before I prepare to mount the uh, preamp. But I've noticed that on my end pin I have an Allen. I'm just wondering if I may luck out and, and it won't require any drilling, but I'm going to get an Allen wrench and remove this. I was looking at it from the inside and I noticed that, uh, yeah, there was something coming through on the inside of it as well. But let's see if this just simply unscrews and see what we've got underneath it. what we've got. That might be the exact size that we need to accommodate the uh, end pin. I'll check it out. So this is what I discovered. This is the uh, what was on the inside of the guitar right here. So it just fell out through the other end. So Okay. Um, I was very fortunate when I unscrewed the end pin on this particular guitar um, it was already pre-drilled to the appropriate size to accommodate this jack, this end pin jack. Um, I'm going to show um, you a special drill bit that I've, I've had for some time um, that I got through Stuart McDonald. And um, actually, it's great for drilling 
out these holes to these dimensions, uh, you know, for an end pin like this uh, to accommodate it. But in this case, I don't have to do any drilling. Um, but uh, so let me just show you the components on this. This is the end cap here, which uh, goes on the outmost exterior. So we just set that there. And then there's a lock nut that goes underneath. And then we have a washer. Okay? And these other components right here, we just have two washers and a lock nut. Now this is on the interior. This is this section is on the inside of the guitar, or the inside of the instrument. And I don't know if you can see, but it's graduated. You can see that it's a little thicker here and then it's thinner right here. Ideally, we just want enough to protrude from the end of the guitar to lock it. That's the idea that we want. But we need to determine where to preset this lock nut. Because what we're going to do, I know there's a special tool. That's a rod that you can insert from the outside of the guitar all the way through, plug it in, and then pull this down through. But we're going to just use a, a regular instrument cable. That'll do the same thing. We can fish it through the hole and pull it through with that. But we want to measure this to get it accurate. And there's a way that we can do it with just a little piece of wire and make a hook on the end of the wire and pull it through the guitar until we do it, put our thumb on it and mark it. And I'll demonstrate how we'll do that. And then we can pull this through when we're ready and, and lock her down. So uh, anyway, uh, I just wanted to show the different components on that. Um, and then the washer on the inside when we're pulling it through. The washer will go on first and this um, knurled edge the kind of an anti-slip or a locking, it's not really a, I guess you could call it a locking washer. That goes on the exterior and that goes up against on the inside of the guitar and on the wood. So we can pull it through there with the cable um, and, and uh, go from there. Okay. Okay, had I needed to drill this out, um, there is a bit that's specially designed for this to prevent you from marring the ex you know the exterior of the uh, of the instrument. Um, there are other videos I know guys have used like a half inch drill bit in uh, so on and so forth, uh, and they'll put tape over here to protect it. I've seen where they've actually taken felt things so when the drill goes all the way through on the block that it won't, you know, go right into the wood, you won't hit it. So they they have like these felt things that go over the drill bit too, kind of a bumper guard sort of thing. But um, I got this a while back because I had contemplated on doing this and um, on another guitar. It's, uh, it's not a cheap bit, but it's specifically designed for this and um, if you have a, a screw hole or pilot hole you could use a forcener bit it'll go right in really smoothly and uh, you'll go all the way through now this is already reamed out to the proper size this has got three graduations to it it's a taper it's got a taper on this end if you're just putting a regular end pin in there to you know just friction and you can dr drill it in part way and do that. And then from here you can see it kind of flattens out from this point on to here. This is straight. This So part of this, about another inch right here is straight. And that's the exact dimension what they actually call for um, on the instructions. Um, let's see, what is it? Widen the end pin hole to 15 30 seconds. So this right in here, this diameter right in the center is 15, 30 seconds. You can feel it. You could actually take a Sharpie pen and draw a line from here to here. This, this is really noticeable because right here it steps up to um, a half inch for another inch. So if you wanted to ream it out another half inch. But they recommend having this end pin hole to accommodate that jack at 15, 30 seconds. This particular bit, I picked it up from Stuart. Um, Stu, uh, Stu McDonald, and um, 
it's not cheap. It's, this drill bit was about 70 something dollars to be honest with you, but if you've got multiple instruments that you plan to modify, it's well worth the investment. It'll save you on your guitar and it's the right tool. This is something that you really don't want to compromise on. Uh, you could probably use a Forstner bit, a uh, half inch maybe, but I wouldn't want to risk marring it, especially if you've got a finer instrument. You, do, you just don't want to take that chance. So this is well worth it, this bit, especially if you've got other instruments that you plan on pulling in pins or putting jacks or some type of similar configuration here, so it's well worth it. I just want to mention too that these instructions, uh, the instructions do not come with this uh, with this preamp system, but if you just go on to uh, Fishman, uh, you know Fishman.com, you can download these PDF format. You can get the instructions on it and go from there with it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, and that's exactly what I'm following right here as we go through this installation. So, but I've lucked out. I didn't need to actually drill that. If you need to actually watch somebody take a drill and drill with this drill bit. There are videos out here on YouTube that show uh, guys doing that, but obviously I didn't need to on this install. I lucked out. Uh, so the only hole I really need to drill is up here in the uh, up here in the uh, uh, you know on the bridge for the piezo pickup, that small hole. And, that, and they've already pre-piloted that as well for me, so uh, really I was really pleasantly surprised. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and drill this out to accommodate the uh, saddle or the piezo. Just make sure you're going in straight. Okay, we go. The next step, one of the procedures that we want to do is that we want to reduce the height of the bridge by the width of the piezo pickup. Okay, um, if we don't, it's going to change the whole setup on the instrument. So basically, that's going to add that much more thickness or height to the bridge. So we want to be able to reduce it. Now I've seen guys where they lay it down and they take a pencil and they draw it that way. Whatever works best for you, whatever tools you might have. Um, I've worked in a dental laboratory for years and fortunately I've got um, a bully gauge. Ah, if I can get it in the camera. I've got a bully gauge here which measures in millimeters, or tenths of millimeters actually. And um, so I took, a, I took a measurement of this, and um, this is exactly, um, let's see, measuring the thickness, it's exactly one-tenth of a millimeter. Yeah, but it's exactly one-tenth. So, what I've done in my particular case, I've just locked it at one tenth of a millimeter because that's the thickness and I've locked it down. There uh, we go. I've locked it down and I was able to take it and notice that it scribed across the, the bone so that's given me a very accurate, the sharp edge of this boulder gauge uh, is actually making a, a mark, a very fine mark along the edge here of just how much I need to reduce it. So I don't have to worry, I'm not compensating it by the thickness of a pencil lead. Somebody used an ultra fine sharpie, but this is making a line, I don't know if you can see it, but it's making, uh, it's making a very fine line going across, going across the edge here just by marring it, the metal is making a line there that I can follow in order to reduce it, to sand it down. So uh, that's, that's how I'm doing it. Um, but the, you get the idea, whether you mark it 
different areas and use a ruler going across or whatever you want to get this thickness. Um, I know automotive industry they've got different gauges that you can use. I would just measure the thickness and, and take it off on each end make sure you got a straight line. I think if you have a pencil going across that unless you've got a very fine mechanical pencil or something I, I guess that would work. Um, but you get the idea you want to reduce that by the thickness of this uh, piece of pickup. Okay so we're going to start taking this down. I've got a small line scored along here um, from what I demonstrated before. Um, I've seen different ways of doing this. Um, I would recommend just taking your time doing it by hand of course. There was a gentleman that uh, I saw on, on YouTube that uh, used the table saw with a piece of wood against the fence and was going this way to ensure that the bottom was not was not beveled that it was true. Uh, that was a great idea. Um, it's a little bit much for me to deal with it that way so if you go in one direction and just slide it across in one direction applying even pressure like this I don't think uh, there's a great risk and going at an angle. I think you're going to still be pretty straight um, as a result. Again, it's, it's all a, a matter of patience. Now I'm using um, a fairly coarse, I'm using a 120. I think some guys were using a 220. This is pretty good because this is a bone saddle and it's taking it off pretty good. And then I'm going to go with a 600 wet sand uh, to really give it kind of a polish finish to it. But um, uh, this, this is taking it off pretty good. Um, and I feel that I have complete control on it that going this way. Uh, doing it the way with the wood and the, the table saw, I'd, my luck would be I'd get end up getting a splinter under my fingernails trying to go with it going back and forth flat. Uh, so I have more control doing it this way. And again, you know, just taking your time with it going in one direction, you should be able to accomplish. Uh, taking that down appropriately, uh, fairly accurately. Okay, I've changed out and I'm using a uh, 600 wet dry. I'm just going to go ahead and go across this a few times. I've got it reduced where I need it. There we go. Just smoothing it out. And as, just as a double check, just to make, make sure that the, the bottom of the bridge is perpendicular to the sides, I actually took a square and uh, lined it right up and it's, uh, it's square. So, like I said, just be patient uh, each step going one direction and you should be fine doing it by hand. But do whatever's uh, most comfortable for you. Okay, so the next step. According to the instructions, um, we are to sand where um, the preamp's going to make contact and adhere to the underside of the soundboard. So I'm using a 220 grit. Um, I'm familiar with how the bracing is up underneath here. I use the mirror and I can feel it where it's going. So I'm just basically uh, Sanding that area, getting rid of any old uh, lacquer or anything like that that might be up underneath there. I don't think it's going to require a lot. You don't have to be too aggressive with it. Just a little bit that I'm doing. I'm making, you know, some progress here. Yeah, I can see it. All right. Go along the side a little bit more. They say uh, make sure that you're uh, exposing the bare wood. So that's the objective here. So uh, I've checked the areas and using the mirror in combination with the sanding, I'm, I got everything uh, pretty close to what I need to get. Uh, next they uh, recommend 
cleaning that with uh, mineral spirits, so we're going to use a little mineral spirits on it. And uh, just kind of wipe that area. Remove any of the uh, sandpaper, the sawdust, or whatever going from there. There we go. Check it. Oh, yeah. Looking good. All right, so uh, next, just uh, let that dry really well, and then we'll seal it. They uh, have a couple of recommendations for sealing it, um, one of which is hide glue, and I'm going to, I'm going to go with the hide glue uh, to seal it and let that dry before applying the preamp. So I use hide glue and finer instruments, and I thought, well, that would be better than some of the other suggestions like cyan or acrylate or super glue I don't care to you know seal it with super glue so I'll go with the hide glue on that I've got some in the uh, workshop so we'll go from there okay earlier as you recall down here on the uh, end pen area we were talking about uh, finding the depth where to uh, make this nut on the inside of the guitar, how far we need to adjust that so just enough of the pin sticks out. Um, so one trick I picked up from another uh, individual on YouTube, I have some solid core wire here and I just uh, made a little sharp bend on the end. So basically I put it inside the hole here insert it, pull it back until I can hook it on the block. There, now it's hooked. So from there I can determine how much I have to come back on here with it. So I went ahead and made a mark with a, a red uh, Sharpie pen here. And uh, now I can just simply adjust this. Okay, a couple of things. Um, as you recall, I measured how far back I had to offset the lock nut on this by using this wire on the end. I measured it, pushed it in when I felt it hook. I measured it out with my thumb. Uh, one of the things that I didn't realize um, or didn't think about, oversight on my part, is this part where it steps down, that's how much it needs to project out the end of the, of the um, guitar. So when you take your measurement, make sure you're measuring from this point back. I was too short, I was pulling it through and it wasn't coming all the way through and I, I realized that uh, that was my bad. So you measure it from this step down over here is where you're measuring from your thumb, where it steps down. It's obvious where you see it. So anyway, I've got some dental floss through there. It should pull through uh, fairly easily now. And uh, we can go ahead and secure that. I guess that's why it really pays off that that's a tight fit so it doesn't go falling back in when you start putting pressure on it. So, here we go. Excellent. Yeah, see. Uh, okay, so you do want to tighten this. I've got an Allen wrench through this to hold it steady. And this is about a half inch as I can tighten this. And I'm making, sh I'm being very careful to make sure that the, uh, the wrench is against the washer and not the body of the, of the guitar. So, there we go. Not to scratch the, the finish. There we go, and get it really snug. 
perfect. Now they're good and tight. And of course the end cap will screw on there. Accordingly, and it covers over the washer and everything. So now we got our end, end pin jack there. Okay, next step here, I've got some hide glue. This isn't the pot glue like what uh, a lot of luthiers use, you know, to heat up and everything, but this is just uh, over the counter. Picked it up at Lowe's, but uh, it's, it's good glue. So I'm going to use that to seal under here where I uh, sand it. So I'm going to move this over to the side. And I'm just going to apply a little on my fingers here. And work it around. And that's going to seal that area for the adhesive. Let me just check. What do I do with my mirror? <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, I don't know. You can see it, but uh, it's uh, looking pretty good. Got all the areas covered there. It's almost like a shellac, I guess. It just seals the grain, so it'll adhere. It's just a very thin coat, and we'll let that dry. All right, I think we can feed the piezo pickup. While we're waiting for that other to dry. Maybe we just get those two wires started, go down to that hole we drilled earlier. set right back in there. Okay. And here's the uh, here's the wires. You got two two wires. Obviously one's a ground right there and the other's at the end. So we're going to attach those onto here. What's really nice about this, you can see there's the end and there's the ground, and here's the two screws. It's like a back wire. This is a, a solderless uh, application, which is really nice. So basically these will just slip into the hole right in there and then just tighten down with a uh, precision screwdriver flathead. So that's all it takes. Just screw those in. We'll be done with uh, with that. Of course, the jack is pre-wired already. We fished it in through underneath, so we don't have to do anything with the with the end jack. That's already soldered in into place on the board. Okay. And then here it's already connected. So that was already done. It's a pretty simple installation. Like I said, it just takes patience. But uh, I think we can go ahead and terminate that, those wires, onto the onto those blocks like I was talking about. And then we'll, uh, I think that glue is probably dry up underneath here, which it does feel dry already. And we can go ahead and peel back this. There's a uh, cellophane film. We'll just peel that off and affix it to the soundboard up underneath. Um, once that's uh, fixed under there, they say it takes about 24 hours for that to completely set up. So, go ahead and do that. All 
I'm just terminating the, uh, the two leads off the uh, piezo pickup. Got them inserted and I'm just tightening them down now. Much like back wiring in a, an electrical outlet. And just tugging on them a little bit to make sure that they are secure. There we go. Looking good. Alright, so we're ready to, you know, adhere that to the uh, bottom underneath the soundboard there. So that's the next step. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and insert this. Make sure my wires are out of the way. And that's the that's the sweet spot right there. So I'll go ahead and peel off the cellophane. in there. Okay, so it's it's in place. I noticed that right along here I could have been a little bit more flush. I may have gotten it cockeyed, but I think it was because of the bracing. But once you put it in place um, I mean it sticks there's no moving it around or adjusting it at that point so um, just try and be careful that's not really that noticeable at all I'm say it doesn't overhang so I'm I'm happy with it as long as it works so another great innovation is this uh, nine volt battery pack here that the uh, Fishman has come up with. Uh, it's just simply attached with Velcro. You attach the Velcro piece um, here on the neck block, whoop, on the neck block right up underneath here. Uh, so again, it's just a peel off, press it, it fixes to it, stays place, and uh, the battery simply goes right in there and uh, stick your go ahead and hook it up to your battery connectors put it in the pouch stick the pouch right in here against the neck block and it's that simple so that's a wonderful innovation so anyway uh, I guess it's about time I'm gonna string it up and uh, go plug it into my uh, Fishman loud box and uh, see how she sounds. There is a trim adjustment under here as well for the microphone and everything so you can kind of balance it out between the piezo and the uh, internal microphone that you got. And then of course you know you can move the mic, it's on a gooseneck, you can move the microphone around uh, you know to get the tone that you're looking for for, for your guitar. So anyway I want to thank you for uh, watching the video. I hope that uh, it proves helpful. Uh, my apologies if it uh, was a little too long or too lengthy. Uh, the idea is is that uh, you know you can scroll forward, fast forward it to those areas that uh, that uh, you know you want more information for. I think in the future, if I do something like this, I may just have it uh, chap you know put chapters or something on there for something like this. But again, my apologies if it was too detailed or too wordy. But I hope you enjoy it uh, and you get something out of it. And uh, if you 
uh, endeavor to uh, pursue a project like this, best of luck to you. It's well worth the effort. At the end of this, um, I've got a little short clip on uh, how it sounds. I'm running it through my uh, Fishman Mini, Loudbox Mini amp, and I'm very pleased with it. It's uh, very quiet, and intonation is great. Um, it sounds very natural. So, anyway, best of luck, and uh, uh, thank you again. Okay, just a little demo here, um, just to give you a sound. This is the guitar. I, I don't have it running through the amp right now. Everything is shut off. So, just to give you a little idea on the, uh, you know, for comparison's sake. Okay, and then I'll uh, cut the amp on. Now I've got the EQ, everything set on this. I've got it midway between the mic and the piezo. Um, and I just got everything straight up on the amp. So I haven't EQ'd anything. This is it uh, through the amp. As you can hear, there's, it's virtually very quiet. There's no hum or anything coming through the uh, amp. But. Uh, <laughs> clear and of course you can adjust the intonation however you want to on it but I'm very pleased with it it's a great little setup thank you again for watching